준비되셨나요? 네, 우리가 한번 잘 해봅시다. 자, 그럼 지금부터 제 22차 기본소득 사운드의 개발 세션 17 Youth Politics and Basic Income으로 가겠습니다. 이 세션의 진행을 맡은 저는 I'm uh, the moderator of the session, uh, Ryu b o s a n a steering committee member of the p i k n Nice to meet you. 먼저 이번 소득 운동 세션. First of all, uh, personally, it's a great honor for me to be moderating this session as part of the uh, BN Congress, uh, which will mark as a great point of transformation in the history of humankind. 있습니다. Uh, before we start the session in earnest, uh, let me uh, tell you something about myself. I am a literary critic, so to be honest, I'm not sure whether I, I should be here moderating this session about basic income. And there's another reason that I feel unfamiliar with a discussion like this. I've never seen a forum uh, that goes strictly as scheduled. So I hope that maybe this session uh, only uh, can allow for uh, some kind of poetic deviation. But uh, please don't be concerned too much. I just mean that I want to create an atmosphere where the uh, panelists uh, can have uh, a more free uh, discussion. And I believe that Korea will be the first country in the world uh, to uh, bring about basic income in reality. And I have no doubt about that. It's not because of the fact that the uh, representative of the main opposition, Mr. Lee jae is an advocate of basic income who's going to be the strongest presidential candidate in the next election. It's not because of the fact that uh, Ms. Yong hye in uh, representative of the basic income network, uh, uh, is having a huge political influence. Uh, it's also not because of the fact that uh, the PIKN uh, is becoming more and more clear in terms of theory as well as wider in terms of public support. I believe that Korea will be the first country on earth uh, to become a welfare state with basic income because of the people uh, sitting beside me. As uh, Professor Annie Miller said in the opening, the basic income movement can only evolve when we have theorists, researchers focusing on empirical research, and activists uh, who uh, try to uh, bring about basic income in reality. And I cannot stress enough the importance of activists uh, who convey uh, the research outcomes uh, from theorists and researchers uh, to the public and organize the public as advocates and champions of basic income. The people sitting right next to me, the youth, are the activists. Please welcome them with a big hand. So, on my right, we have Kim Hanjeol, Seo Taesong, Shin Won Ho, Shin Ji Hae, Yang Ji Hae, Hwang Bom, Yoon Kim Jin So, and Hwang Bom Yang. Uh, but maybe describing them only as activists will not be enough. They are more than that. From my perspective, they are a, a completely new type of basic income campaigners who integrate the different roles of activist, researcher, and theorist. Actually, uh, I have never seen them before, personally, to be honest. Now, uh, in Korea, there are many basic income uh, campaigners like these people in uh, different parts of the country. And as we can see from the basic party, basic income party movement, they are building a strong and wide coalition. And they are not afraid of experiencing failure. With the motto of introducing basic income, uh, they are challenging uh, the politics at every opportunity. 
thanks to their experiments in fantastic failures, basic income is gathering more and more audience. They are creators of the future and avant-garde of the basic income campaign. And they will uh, be the ones who have to be credited the most if uh, Korea becomes the first country to have basic income in reality. So this session uh, is about listening to the stories of young politicians uh, who are making fun and radical experiments on the front line of the basic income campaign. I am a little bit concerned uh, about me talking too long, uh, taking away the time for the panelists. I didn't mean to do this when I said poetic deviation. And I have read the papers of the panelists uh, in advance, and uh, many parts of the, their writings really touched my heart. Whenever you feel the same, uh, throw away the coldness as theorists and express a passionate support and encouragement for them. So let's take, uh, listen to the stories of the young politicians, starting from Mr. Kim Hanbyeol. Good afternoon. I'm very nervous and I'll try my best. I am the chair of the Incheon branch of the Basic Income Party, and I also ran for the candidacy for Incheon mayor in the eighth national simultaneous local election. Today, I'm going to talk about the reason why the labor union's main demand for the government should be a BI. So regarding my life, Trade unions mean a lot to me in my life because my parents were activists and they fell in love while they were working as activists and then I was born. And I was also influenced by them and lived my life as an activist for unions. But going farther back then, in Incheon, there was a car factory called Deo Motors. Now it's GM Deo now. But back then it was a Dale Motors. And at that time, my father worked for this factory and he was, at that time, Dale Motors began laying off workers on a large scale and my father was also let go. The union struggle for job security has been protracted and there were many violent incidences. And during the process, the government turned to physical force and used the force of the police. They arrested workers and suppressed them violently. Many of the workers were exposed to violent environment and they suffered a lot. They lost lots of incomes. They, their incomes basically evaporated and they had to fight poverty, not only just fighting being laid off. At the time, I was so poor, so when I wanted to spread jam on my bread, I had to do it very thinly because jam was so precious to me at the time. There was this slogan, layoffs is a murder, and workers took to the street and they fought for their lives. And this insecurity is still left as a scar in the hearts of the workers. And that anxiety ran through my life as well. So I strongly believed as a child that there was something wrong with the world. And that belief nourished me to be a trade union activist. I fought along alongside part-timers who didn't even earn minimum wages, and also alongside irregular workers who lost their jobs when COVID-19 stopped the Korean economy. But still, more workers became more vulnerable under poor working conditions. In Korea, the number of workers who cannot refuse a job, even if it does not comply with the minimum wage regulation, and those who have no choice but to work despite an unstable employment relationship, is increasing every year. Universality has declined, and policies and institutions are one step behind. 
The unions have also been slow to respond. They're more reactive than pre preventive in addressing problems, and we're seeing chronic problems piling up. And I don't think trade unions can do their part to resolve all the problems that there are. Not backing down doesn't mean that we can live a better life. And at that time, I felt that a prospect, a perspective for the future seemed hollow. And then I took another look at the idea of a basic income, and I joined the Basic Income Party. I felt a sense of hope that it can protect universality. Not only will we not back down, but we'll also be able to open up the possibility of a different life, a different society. If layoffs can no longer be a murder and work is no longer an obligation to survive, then I think unions will be able to make more meaningful demands. We may be able to demand a just transition in response to the climate crisis, not in a declarative sense, but as a change in the landscape that is accompanied by social change. It seems that the unions of individual workplaces need to be empowered to discover their own social meaning. But unfortunately, the Korean labor community not only fails to see a basic income as a major demand, but also understands it as a kind of challenge to work, seeing it undermines the value of labor. In Korea, we call it the right to labor, and it is seen as a very divine and sacred critical right. But I don't think the right not to work is in conflict with the right to work. I think they can be complementary. And during the process, I believe that a basic income can be a catalyst or a vehicle between the two. So in a nutshell, in the labor market of Korea, I believe that a BI should be a major demand. So that is my reason why I'm serving as an activist. Thank you. 자, 진정한 노동을 위해서는 노동하지 않을 so for a uh, real meaningful labor, uh, you need the right uh, not to work. Uh, that's a great message. I hope the uh, labor movement in Korea uh, can really uh, listen uh, to this message. For your information, uh, Mr. Kim Han Yul uh, ran for mayor of Incheon in the uh, local elections. In 2022, and uh, he lost election by a very small margin. You know. And uh, he is a, uh, a young uh, politician uh, campaigning for basic income as one of his core missions in life. The next speaker is Mr. So Taesung. Nice to meet you. I am Seo Taesung. I uh, ran for uh, governor of the Gyeonggi province last year. And now I am uh, leading uh, the uh, Gyeonggi province um, uh, branch of the uh, Basic Income Party. Now, the uh, Gyeonggi province has the uh, largest population in Korea with 14 uh, million as of this year. And from 2019, it has been um, providing youth basic income. However, uh, the uh, two major politicians in the election last year were not really favorable to basic income. That is why I decided to run for governor of the Gyeonggi province um, from the uh, basic uh, income party in order to lay the foundation uh, for uh, a truly universal national uh, basic income uh, by protecting the youth basic income in the Gyeonggi province. But today, uh, I'm going to talk about the need for basic income from the grounds of contribution to psycho psychological uh, security uh, in uh, modern uh, capitalism. When I was an undergraduate student, I was uh, part of the uh, uh, Peace Force in Myanmar, which was under the dictatorship at that time. I met with a lot of people uh, who had insecure lives, regardless of how much they work. Uh, after coming back to Korea, I uh, was an activist in a part-timers uh, union, and also I had some experience of working as a care worker, meeting with a lot of seniors, um, 
living with you're living a very insecure life with a very small amount of basic old age pension. Meeting with these people uh, in insecure lives, I uh, learned about the impact of the insecurity on their lives, and uh, that was why I. Uh, deeply felt the need for basic income uh, provided regardless of work. Um, there are many uh, reasons uh, that we need basic income, but today I'm going to focus on its effect on psychological security. First, uh, individually, if you don't have money, uh, you have um, much less uh, to do in a capitalist society. And when that happens, you feel a sense of helplessness. Uh, this leads to a psychological insecurity, and sometimes it leads to socially undesirable uh, behavior, which means behaviors uh, that makes your community worse. Sometimes it means a crime. However, regularly provided basic income can provide a sense of psychological security that you can survive no matter what you do. There is also a collective impact. Now, basic income will create a foundation for a positive social change. In a society where you're on your own, it is difficult to think about the entire community because of the fierce competition for survival. However, when people regain psychological security with basic income, they have some room to look at others in the society. And at the same time, they will feel less resistance to change in the system. Uh, like this, uh, basic income provides a positive impact on the uh, psychological security of individuals uh, and society as a whole. Becoming more generous to others and the community uh, itself. Uh, in this uh, political context where uh, the uh, far right uh, growing uh, on the uh, psychological uh, insecurity, we have to uh, pay attention to this psychological effect. Thank you. Well, at the beginning, I told you that you can, you know, talk uh, in, a, in a free manner and you can take a little more time. Uh, well, uh, I'm talking again, maybe too much. So a few years ago, I was not really, uh, you know, um, I, I didn't really agree to the amount of that uh, basic income changes the world. At that time, I thought when the world changes, basic income will be introduced. But now I think a little different. Uh, just like uh, Mr. Sa said, uh, basic income can create a foundation for positive social change. Uh, that's the uh, starting point of dreaming of a better world. I fully agree to that. Now, the uh, Gyeonggi province was where the uh, basic income uh, started in Korea, uh, but it's uh, moving away uh, from that pioneering role, which is uh, regrettable. I hope Mr. Sa uh, can uh, work harder uh, in order to make the Gyeonggi province as a, a frontier of basic income. Let's move on to the uh, third uh, speaker, who is Mr. Shin Won. Please give, a, give him a big hand. Nice to meet you. I am Shin Won Ho from the city of Daegu. I am the uh, chair of the uh, Basic Income Party committee, uh, Daegu Committee. Uh, in the local elections uh, last year, I ran for mayor of Daegu uh, with a pledge of introducing basic income uh, against the uh, pledge of the conservative candidate uh, to make the uh, deficit of the city government zero. Now, uh, most of the people here are uh, activists in Seoul in the Gyeonggi province. So uh, let me uh, focus on uh, the uh, local characteristics of Daegu, where I live in. Now, uh, there are some uh, public images of Daegu, 
Of course, it's one of the most conservative cities in this country, and it's also a very hot city in the summer. Now, the citizens of Daegu are embarrassed about the fact that Daegu is actually uh, Daegu, Daegu has the lowest productivity in this country uh, for more than 30 consecutive years. Now, whenever there is a debate about growth or uh, distribution, the conservatives uh, talked about they can excel at growth, and that was how they secured the power, local power, uh, for the several decades. However, the productivity of the city has been the lowest during the same period, and many uh, youth are leaving the city uh, for jobs. Still, this is a huge city with 2.4 million people. Now, Daegu is a city where growth overwhelms distribution. When you have a survey or an interview about uh, the public, uh, growth uh, has an absolute majority. So, everything in every system uh, in the city is biased towards economic growth. And in the city, I grew up in a district called Susong. Now, Susong uh, used to be called, uh, Susong is sometimes called the Gangnam of Daegu. So, in my childhood years, I experienced uh, the rapid changes of the uh, community. So preparing for this talk today, I, uh, I, um, I thought about uh, my years in the elementary school. Uh, so that was a very small school with only two classes in the same year. And when I was in my fifth year, uh, we had a, a very expensive apartment complex right behind uh, the school. And then we had uh, three classes in the same year. Uh, now, these new students uh, came across very different from us. And we uh, started to be jealous. I was only in the fifth year of the elementary school, so I didn't understand everything, but they just looked so different. And our life changed over uh, that year. Uh, after uh, a summer, the summer vacation, for example, we always talk about what we did uh, during the vacation. Now, from the fifth year, I started to hear about these new students' story about going to the United States, uh, going to Europe uh, for a travel. So that was when I first felt a sense of deprivation uh, for the first time. So uh, the uh, Susong uh, district of Daegu was developed over and over again, just like the rest of the country. The community I uh, used to live in uh, don't have the same landscape uh, at all uh, today. So our mission as teenagers at the time was to focus on study in the Susong district and then advance to Gangnam of Seoul. And get rich. So, uh, the moment I saw the huge apartment complex, I felt that my life is like a chessboard of competition. I have tried many times to get out of the board, uh, how, but uh, and, uh, it was sometimes because of other people telling me that even if you succeed in getting away from this board, you're going to be entering another board of competition. And as an undergraduate uh, student, I followed a senior and I saw this poster on basic income in an office. So that was a fun and pleasant uh, shock uh, to me. I spent several sleepless nights uh, after 
first uh, looking at that word, uh, basic income. I thought that the same word uh, will also uh, energize a lot of people. And I never thought that after 15 years, I uh, should be still saying that let us imagine basic income together. Now, uh, Daegu uh, is still biased towards growth. Uh, Daegu uh, is always the last city uh, to introduce a free school lunch, for example, and living wage. However, uh, the public of Daegu is still voting for the politics of growth. However, there was a very exceptional experience uh, during the pandemic. Now, the first outbreak in Korea was in Daegu, and uh, the city uh, decided to provide uh, a kind of emergency uh, financial support to all citizens. Now, that experience was remembered uh, by many people, and it was understood as an example of the community protecting its members. So, I don't believe that um, the city of Daegu cannot be understood only as a conservative city. Now, the city uh, has queer rights activists, disability rights uh, activists, and there is a campaign to create a safety net to prevent poverty, not uh, arguing for a system to support the poor. Now, uh, in the uh, last presidential election, the slogan of the uh, basic income party candidate was basic income so that you can be yourself. And the slogan, slogan of Daegu for several decades has been colorful Daegu. Uh, to realize both slogans, uh, I will keep working hard. Thank you. Well, uh, when you say Daegu, I feel like uh, the weather is even hotter. Uh, maybe it's because of the uh, political uh, reality of the city. Uh, when you have a crisis, uh, you have uh, actually a more uh, power uh, to change that. I hope uh, that you can have a better uh, uh, election results uh, next time. Thank you very much, Mr. Shin. We're moving on to the fourth speaker, Ms. Shin ji Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. I'm with Basic Income Party. I'm a spokesperson and I'm the chair of the Seoul branch of the Basic Income Party. Before I begin, well, my apologies to translators. But it seems like we have many new faces. So, so I'd like to briefly introduce well, instead of giving a speech on how I became interested in basic income party, but today I'm going to talk about what challenges we have and why was this party created. I would like to give a candid talk on this. So, a quick intro to myself. When the Asian, Asian financial crisis hit Korea, we saw the birth of the basic livelihood system and I was one of the beneficiaries and among the less than 5% of the population, I actually experienced myself how I can be stigmatized. And also when I was a university student, I volunteered to help people with developmental disabilities. So this BEI is about everyone. It has deserves a life with dignity. So that is why I'm here and working as an activist. I believe that you have many backgrounds and have your stories. 
and you're passionate about this idea. And there are many others who wanted to join me as well. I believe that many of people who are in this place, I believe that they worked for some other parties as well. Maybe the Basic Income Party was not the first party that they joined. They must have joined some other parties for specific reasons, with their own reasons. And a BI, as one of the many other policies, in this case, can we really realize this idea in Korea? That was one of the thoughts I had. And looking at what's happening in the political arena in Korea, we saw lots of changes, just like Mr. So just said. Well, in Gyeonggi province, which, ha which has the biggest population in Korea, we had this BI policy to provide a basic income for people aged over 24 years. And one of the president candidates had this pledge for a BI. So we thought that this is the right moment where we can bring forward the idea of a BI. And that's when we thought that we have to create a party. So we worked on this preparation process starting from 2019. So during that time, the slogan we had, no matter who you are, you are entitled to 600,000 Korean won. That's about in USD, I believe it's about 500 US dollars. So the slogan said $500 for everyone. And maybe some might have thought that this can create an opportunity and many in their 20s and 30s wanted to join our party looking at this slogan. In Korea, well, in order to create a party, it's very complex and it's very strict. But in only two months, we were able to meet the number of quorum to create a party. And also, we became a party which is focused on the sole agenda, which is a basic income. But the day after the creation of the party, we saw the first case of the COVID-19 in Korea. So other than creating the party and having the ceremony, we couldn't do any other outdoor activities. But at the same time, it was a great opportunity for us to convey this message, asking for government stimulus checks to the whole population. And after three or four months after the first case of COVID-19, the government did provide stimulus checks for the Korean population, even though it was on a household basis rather than individual. There was a one-off stimulus checks. But anyway, I believe that Korean people have better knowledge of this concept of BI with the stimulus checks, and they might have this notion that this might be something like when a BI is actually introduced, and we saw the increased supporting for a BI. We had a presidential election last year, and during the campaign, well, as we have more recognition of a BI among the pu public as a candidate for presidency, it seems like it's a must that you have to address this issue of a BI. And even the Seoul mayor, starting from last year, well, they started to come up with experiments regarding different types of income security systems, including the negative income tax. So we're seeing these different types of experiments. And what that means to politicians like us is, among many other things, why do we have to stick to a BI? That gives us a that opens the ground for us to have discussions, discourses around this.
And when it comes to this guaranteed income, who will be guaranteed and by how much? And how can you finance these projects for implementation? So these are the specifics that we're looking at in the Korean society. And why should it be for all? And why should it be? the same amount or same level for all. So now we are in a very critical step, or sticky step, where we have to persuade the public as to the justification of a BI. So this is where we are standing at the at this at the moment, trying to convey the justification of a BI. And with the parliamentary elections coming up next year, the possibility of a BI has to be put on the political agenda of ours. And in our society, the share of wealth that we deserve should be redistributed to everyone in Korea. And that should be the priority of ours going forward. This is the third day that I've been part of this Congress. And in many sessions, we are talking about how we can protect the BI from political pressure and how we can protect it from politics. Looking at this international group of participants, well, the more we have, in this field for BI, we believe that we can accelerate this change in different societies. And in many parts of the world, there are many political parties that prioritize this concept of BI. We hope that we can meet soon and talk about this issue together. Thank you. Yeah, for your reference, Ms. Shin Ji He, she is a spokesperson of the Basic Income Party. So she did a great job speaking for her party and for simultaneous translation. Our interpreters, thank you very much for their service. Well, we are not sticking to the script, but we still get great interpretation. So thank you very much. Is it now we're moving on to the fifth speaker, Ms. Yang Ji Please welcome her with a big hand. Nice to meet you. I am Yang Ji and I ran for a uh, PR candidate uh, for the uh, Gyeonggi uh, province. Council in the local elections last year. I wear this uh, light blue shirt, uh, just like uh, many uh, supporters uh, for Congress uh, who have a great passion uh, for basic income uh, in this country. And so meeting with uh, other uh, supporters, I didn't have the time and opportunity to talk about why I took interest in basic income and I uh, feel great uh, to be speaking uh, in this session uh, about my personal story. So the uh, title of my presentation paper is Basic Income for Immature, Incapable and Undeserved Beings. And uh, it's because I belong to one of them. Uh, actually, last year, I was concerned about whether I am qualified to run for a public uh, office uh, because uh, the most of the public would say that I am not. I didn't go to uh, university uh, and in this society, I am regarded not smart enough to become a politician. I am a, youth, a human rights activist and feminist. I am not neutral. I am biased towards uh, minorities in uh, this society, like women, the youth, queer, and people with disabilities. However, this is exactly why I entered politics. Uh, the politics of basic income, uh, I believe, uh, starts from the immature, the incapable, and undeserved. For me, uh, basic income is a starting point uh, to guarantee the rights of people uh, who uh, 
who are often deprived of a basic safety net in, our, in their lives. Uh, when I was uh, younger, there were many friends uh, who wanted to leave uh, their homes because they wanted to flee uh, the violence of their parents, uh, for example. At that time, uh, we didn't have a choice to be uh, economically independent. Uh, and I realized that in this society, uh, uh, adolescents uh, don't have any freedom outside of the uh, permission of their parents. And uh, that uh, was one of the reasons why I thought basic income is necessary uh, to guarantee the dignity of uh, adolescents uh, as well. Now, in Korea, uh, adolescents are often uh, forced to think about uh, getting uh, great jobs, well-paid jobs, and going to prestigious uh, universities. And as a criticism of this uh, system, I decided to be a objector uh, to university. And when I declared that uh, objection, I was often told, well, it's uh, you can decide to not go to university if you are capable. And as a feminist, I decided to not get uh, not uh, get married, and I am often told that, well, that's a choice for women these days as long as you can make a lot of money. Uh, but I made these two choices not because I uh, was able to uh, be uh, financially rich. Um, I made uh, uh, those choices because I wanted to say no uh, to such uh, public uh, perception. Uh, still, uh, many uh, people uh, denounce uh, young people who are unemployed or uh, teenagers uh, refusing to go to universities uh, from the same uh, perspective. Uh, but I uh, believe that uh, still they uh, deserve uh, to receive uh, basic income. Now, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the government uh, provided uh, a kind of emergency basic income to all people. However, uh, the youth or the adolescents uh, didn't receive that because uh, their parents uh, were the ones who received the money uh, for them. So, I believe uh, that although it may be controversial, I am arguing for basic income for uh, all people, not just adults. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I uh, respect your struggle uh, in this uh, society. Uh, where only the mature, capable, and deserved people are allowed to thrive. So uh, that was a very uh, calm and uh, determinant uh, talk uh, about your um, uh, commitment to basic income. Well, maybe preparing for uh, this session, I think I had a kind of a condescending attitude. Well, the youth here are working very hard um, because they met uh, the uh, basic income campaign accidentally. Uh, but uh, listening to their stories, I think uh, uh, my uh, attitude and perspective uh, is changing, and I feel like I am uh, like much uh, more little, uh, much smaller uh, than them. After listening to all the uh, uh, talks, maybe uh, I would be like uh, on the ground. So moving on to the uh, sixth uh, talk uh, by Ms. Yoon Kim Jin Sung. Let's give her a big hand.
네, 반갑습니다. 소개받은 윤 김진선. Nice to meet you. My name is Yoon Kim Jin s o n 마이크 잡고 계속 점심 몇 시까지? Well, uh, I was the one uh, for the last uh, two days uh, making housekeeping announcements about uh, lunch uh, and so on, and it feels great to be a speaker uh, in this session. 네, 각자의 생활 맥락에서 기본소득이 어떻게 어 정. So the uh, previous speakers talked about how basic income uh, gained me. meaning uh, in their lives and how they decided to enter politics. So I'm going uh, to do the same thing uh, this time from uh, the perspective of uh, a young woman. Woman. Now I'm in my mid-twenties. Uh, Now two uh, people of my age, uh, politics is something that looks difficult, something to be shunned. But uh, politics uh, became something very meaningful that I need to develop myself too. Uh, I think uh, politics uh, was a reflection of my life. Um, I, uh, to me, uh, politics felt very important because uh, it has a huge impact on my life. Uh, in 2016, when I was 20, uh, there was uh, a misogynist uh, murder case in the uh, Gangnam Station. Uh, the uh, murderer waited for a woman uh, to uh, use the toilet uh, after uh, letting five men uh, pass. So that was when, uh, for the first time in my life, uh, I felt that I can be a victim of uh, such a uh, murder case uh, any time. Uh, so that was an experience of my life uh, being broken down into pieces. So after uh, understanding that my life is full of complex discriminations and injustice, um, I also uh, gained a perspective uh, to uh, look at the lives of other people. Now, uh, the foundation of this society, which may seem natural to many people, uh, actually limits people's roles in their lives and how they create relations with others and even stop some people from moving around. When I first met uh, basic income, I just thought that, well, it's a good tool that can be combined with anything. Uh, but as time went by, I understood that basic income uh, is for everyone, not something uh, necessary for people in a specific condition. And um, people like myself uh, can actually benefit uh, from uh, basic income. Uh, personally, I experienced uh, sexual violence and date violence uh, from my teenage years and uh, to my uh, 20s. And uh, up until now, I uh, failed to find a stable job. And I live in a very small uh, studio uh, for many years. And whenever I meet with um, you know female friends of mine, uh, we talk about uh, you know sexual violence and discrimination uh, at workplaces. Uh, and when uh, in uh, from some friends of mine uh, who so, some friends of mine uh, they always talk about how they hate how much they hate their work you know listening to these uh, different stories I uh, again realized that uh, the difficulties and challenges in our lives uh, do not originate from one single source uh, it's a complex uh, system of discrimination so I thought that I maybe we need to rewrite discrimination and selection or distribution and in income uh, from the beginning. Now I think uh, the world uh, basic income wants to create uh, is uh, a lot in line with uh, the visions of feminism. So I think when feminism meets basic income, uh, you have a, a powerful uh, force. Now, uh, the feminist perspective want to, wants to understand women uh, as uh, individuals with dignity, not just wives, daughters, or moms. Uh, and uh, basic income uh, also believes individuals uh, have dignity, not as a member of a family. So when you put these two perspectives together, um, it, uh, they are in a great uh, harmony. So I think uh, we need to uh, criticize 
uh, discrimination against women in the labor market and at the same time criticize the centrality of labor and put forward a new paradigm for redistribution. Now, uh, in the uh, past uh, few months, uh, Korea uh, has experienced a lot of uh, trage tragedies. Now, um, a few days ago, the uh, bereaved families of the uh, Itaewon stampede uh, victims um, had uh, protests on the road. They did so um, following uh, a traditional Buddhist ritual of taking three steps forward and uh, bowing once. Uh, one of the bereaved families uh, said this uh, in an interview that if you, y y your family experience something like this, do not have a funeral too early before you find out what exactly happened and why your family died. So there is the uh, Itaewon uh, stampede that is still not being resolved and there was also the uh, flooding of Osong that killed uh, many people. Faced with these tragedies, we feel sad and angry. Now that uh, feeling might simply frustrate people but at the same time it can uh, provide an opportunity to move toward a better uh, alternative. Uh, I believe that uh, basic income uh, can be uh, a similar uh, tool, uh, allowing people uh, to uh, dream of a better life. So uh, this talk really reminds us of how insecure the Korean society is. Now, the overwhelming purpose of the society is development and growth and uh, people are used as means uh, for that. That's a uh, structure of the society. So that is why we uh, experience these repeated uh, tra uh, tragedies. If you want to stop this cycle and move towards a different direction, you need basic income. Basically, that's the story of the speaker. Moving on to the last talk. Please welcome Mr. Pang Pop Yang with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. I am working for the Basic Income Party in the Gwangju area. Today, I'd like to introduce my role as a Basic Income politician that I'm planning to lead up to my next year's general election and the process I went through. The first time I came to have an identity as a politician in my life was when I had an election of a student council at my university. At the time, running for the student council, I was going to argue that we should get rid of school cartels. I wanted to convey the message that we should stop playing this ridiculous class status system and create a true academic community. However, due to how the student council elections are run, I had to give in, give up on my approach. At that time, there was an established force in the student body that had been running the student council in a very corrupt way. On the other hand, there were these critics who opposed them. But somehow, in that year's election, it, it became a one-on-one -on -one race between me and the incumbents. So if I had talked about breaking the school cartels and so on, it would have been looked like a deviant candidate running against a normal one. It would have contributed to covering up the corruption led by the establishment. So in my own way, I came up with a very compromising stance. But the problem was that it was still confusing in the eyes of our voters. I didn't fully embody the message that voters wanted. And I didn't know how to be effective in terms of campaigning methodology. In politics, circumstances might decide who's going to win. But politicians' inability to convey the message he represents is a lack of competency. I didn't fully understand the situations regarding the election back then, and I, I, I didn't really know what a politician should do. 
I wasn't fully prepared to be the message itself. And of course, it must have been confusing for the voters. In the end, I lost this election with 40% of the votes. But fortunately, I was able to use this experience to become a better politician in the next election. And in 2019, I was elected to the General Association of Clubs and was able to oust the establishments as the head of the Emergency Committee of the Student Council. After the, this experience, it was the local elections in 2022 that made me think again that I want to pursue a political identity. Gwangju, where I live, has a very high voter turnout. However, in the last local elections, the turnout was very low, exceptionally low. The biggest reason for that is the lack of clarity in the message of the Democratic Party politicians who have a monopoly position in the Gwangju region. But on the other hand, the messages of the political parties against the Democrats were not clear either. I don't think all the politicians in Gwangju have done a good job as politicians. My goal is to make myself a viable candidate and improve the quality of politics in Gwangju as a whole. But now, before I talk about my activities as a basic income politician, let me first take a look at the election situation. The 2024 parliamentary elections will be an election that will be judged the Yoon Song Nyeol regime very clearly. For many voters, they start the standard by which they view elections is the judgment of the regime. And quite unsurprisingly, the Democratic Party, which is on the opposite side of the spectrum, will be the first consideration for the voters. So isn't there a role for the basic income politicians to play? I believe that the least, at least in Gwangju and Honam area, the demand for forces that oppose the Yoon Song Yeol regime in a different way, then the Democratic Party can lead to a meaningful number of votes. It's still going to be hard for them to win, but if they show meaningful results, we can create a situation where voters have a more positive view of politics. Some in the political circles seem to try to approach this demand from a perspective of political ideology, saying both sides are wrong or advocating the third way. But in my view, the first condition for meeting the demand is to give, give voters confidence that these forces have political expertise. In other words, we should be able to give them the impression that these politicians really do their job systematically and meticulously. Campaign tone and political ide ideology can be adjusted to meet this condition, and I plan to carry out political work using AI as I play the role of a basic income politician who can give trust. Without fancy sounding words, what I mean is to effectively build a series of office automation using machine learning and deep learning to perform tasks that can give voters a sense of trust. To this end, I received training in AI technology at an educational institution. Now we are working on a plan to develop detailed software services, and if, it ten, if 10 minutes were enough for me when it would take others one hour to read 100 pages, then it would, it would be very efficient. A basic income is a new principle that is necessary to live a human and efficient life in the age of AI. We, basic income politicians, are the ones who are best adapted to the AI society. We can be quicker in confronting the Yoon Song Nyeol regime. I think that's the message that we can deliver to the public, and I will do my best to be a politician who can fulfill this role. Thank you. I hope your plans will turn into a success. Thank you very much for the talks. We listened to seven panelists. Before I started, uh, at the beginning of the session, I said that I'm convinced Korea will be the first country to introduce a basic income for all, thanks to the very people right here. Do you agree? Well, when I 
said this, well, it was more of a metaphorical thing, but I really mean this now. And I believe that that's exactly what you feel. We listened to seven participants, and I believe that they are the new types of BI activists. So this is this they shared with us their view and strong commitment to a BI. So if you have any questions about plans or if you have a message to support them, you can freely share with us. So um, I actually asked a question uh, yesterday. I am a member of the Basic Income Party. 회사 그 스타트업을 하나 운영을 하고 있고 I am running a startup and uh, you know the last speaker is talking about uh, AI and actually my startup is about AI if you need me uh, to you know further your study uh, please feel free to contact me anytime now um, it's been only a month or two uh, that uh, since I became a member of the party but I've been thinking about basic income uh, for 20 years. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, undergraduate student journalist, uh, you know, um, we had a very uh, small uh, box column about the thoughts of Henry George. Uh, I, my, uh, I was riveted uh, to his ideas, and that was when I first learned about basic income. Now, just like the speaker from Daegu talked about, I uh, used to, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, battle uh, on the uh, online forums uh, who always uh, champion for growth. And um, I was surprised uh, that uh, we have a basic income party now. And uh, this is my uh, concerns are about what to do next uh, once we have basic income. You know, um, after 20 years of becoming a keyboard warrior, so to speak, uh, myself, um, there has been no progress. But now uh, that I have come race, uh, I feel very heartened. So my question is this, you know, um, from an economic perspective, basic income is a complete idea in itself. You know, before being a developer, I am an economist myself, you know, uh, you know, economically, basic income has been proven mathematically. But, you know, in the city like Daegu, uh, people are really for growth and we want to talk about distribution. But that's not the narrative we need to use for basic income because basic income is also for growth. The problem is that we need to educate people about this economic idea of basic income. You know, I became a member of the party and I pay my dues because the party might play a role in educating people about this uh, very uh, fundamental uh, economic uh, ideas regarding basic income. What's your plans? That's my question. So uh, basic income uh, is complete uh, as an uh, economic idea. And the question is how to educate uh, people about that. Who's going to answer the question? Maybe the spokesperson? is the best position or the speaker from Tengu? Who's going? All right. I'm the spokesperson of the party. So since the foundation of the party in 2020, we have been preparing for elections every year. And in that process, we try to update and enhance our policy platform. And I think we have been growing as a party in that process, which is crucial. Now, uh, in Korea, education uh, is really about you know you're on your own and uh, that's the direction the current administration is going for so just like you said what kind of education we have uh, is going to make or break the future of uh, the Korean society and I uh, and I want you uh, to be on board with us Thank you very much. I hope you can have the translation. As 
somebody who founded Bien in 1986 as a youth. I have listened with great pleasure to how you have been addressing it today. And I only wish I were your age, because you are at a moment when I agree, and as I said in my speech yesterday, Korea could become the first country in the world with a real basic income. I think many of us believe that. Your presidential candidate came very close. And it's important, I think, for all of you to have a mix of anger motivating what you're doing and to convey that anger, the sense of frustration, a sense of the insecurities of the precariat in Korea, a sense of anger about the climate disaster that affects your generation, and a sense of humor, because humor is a powerful motivating force. And why I've enjoyed listening to you is I see both in your speeches, and I wish you every success because we need your energies to lead us. So thank you very much. Yeah, 말씀 감사합니다. Thank you very much for your um, encouragement. So, this is uh, what I felt. Now, these speakers do not uh, theoretically support basic income. They just support basic income. Maybe that's a source of their power. They are capable of overcoming uh, the hardships in the campaigning. So we have our hands in the back. Uh, we have a lady in glasses. Right? My name is Cho Eun Seok. I am a, a, a PhD candidate at Korea University. So this is uh, more like my uh, comment uh, about the meaning of basic income to myself. Uh, have you heard of the word uh, studying mom? So I am studying and looking after my child at the same time. So it's difficult uh, to do actually uh, one thing, but I'm uh, struggling every day to do, do two things every day, and every day I'm experiencing the lowest of myself. Now, uh, the uh, social attention uh, to studying moms and uh, uh, institutional support uh, for studying moms uh, are very little. So sometimes I feel uh, this anxiety uh, about becoming a useless person, not uh, being good at anything. So I am not you know, going to university uh, regularly as a, a student because I have finished that uh, course in uh, just writing my dissertation. Uh, and under the current um, children's daycare system, uh, my child uh, has to uh, has to uh, be waiting in a long waiting line. Uh, and, uh, because of that fact and uh, because of the pandemic, I couldn't spend a whole year uh, on writing my dissertation. So during those years, in actually today, I am in a huge need for recognition for what I'm doing, for the labor I am doing that is not appreciated by uh, society. That is why I actively support uh, basic income. You know, I am kind of uh, in the middle of young and middle-aged. Uh, 
and uh, listening to the stories of the youth activists uh, supporting basic income. Uh, from my age, 사람으로서, 어, who is going through a dark tunnel uh, of my life, I thought of uh, a future where basic income is provided uh, to studying moms as well, uh, who can uh, you know keep up with the uh, competition uh, in maybe write a doctoral uh, dissertation and look after my children at the same time. So that's how, uh, why I want to encourage you and uh, support you. So uh, that was a kind of encouragement and support I uh, never expected of. Uh... 우리가 so, 많은 발전을 했고 세계에서 경제 life is hard. 높은 순위에 있다. Uh, Korea uh, has uh, a huge economy and we have achieved development. Uh, 있다는 걸 확인할 때 but we still see uh, a lot of insecurity and instability in our society. And whenever I see that uh, the economic growth is pointless. So how can we solve this complex and accumulated problems? Uh, one of the answers is also, again, uh, basic income. We have uh, a gentleman in the back. Good afternoon. I'm from Chungang University. My name is Kim Young-seok. And I uh, really liked your talks. And my question is, I'm studying, and as from as a researcher, for those researches that happen on the site, well, there must be themes that have to be discussed along with the basic income. And I believe that we have room for improvement in terms of this. So listening to your talks, there are many research outcomes and agenda items related to a BEI. And at this moment, for activists and researchers and for many other people in the field, if there is anything that should be related to the topic of a BI that you want to recommend, I'd like to know more about that. So is there this kind of relevant topic that we need, we mustn't overlook? <laughs> So who would like to address this question? Well, I believe that other panelists need some time to talk, so why don't I grab the mic first? Regarding the Youth Basic Income Network, seven years ago, I actually delivered a presentation on the topic of youth BI network and movement. Why youth movement matters is not just about income security, but it can actually tell you where your civil rights stands. For instance, if you study the topic of youth BI, well, even though you receive this money, actually the guardians or custodians have the right to have an access to this money. That's what you learn. And regarding this custodians and legal custodians and protection of children from these legal custodians when there are issues or problems, well, this issue is not always discussed thoroughly when we talk about this youth BI movement. So the concept of BI would mean different things and this would relate it to many other rights, including civil rights. And it really depends on who the subjects are and how empowered they are. So there are many aspects that are related to the concept of a basic income. And what I'm interested in is when when children do not have children, 
And when there are other legal custodians that are designated by the law, in order to in order to protect these children, well, that sometimes that would mean changing the civil law. And in that case, we have to rethink the concept of family and care. So looking at these issues, I felt very lonely because politicians and all the other activists in the field seem to be talking about a whole lot different topics. So that was my take. 네, 제가 추가적으로 좀 말씀드려도 괜찮을까요? Can I also uh, add a comment? Of course, yes. 아, 우선 기본소득당이 창당될 수 있었던 자, uh, you know, what was the uh, momentum for uh, creating the uh, basic income party uh, came from the uh, BIKA and, and the uh, many researchers uh, who uh, have been very active uh, in the uh, network. That was why uh, we were able to establish our platform as a party very quickly. So once again, I'd like to express my gratitude to all members of the network. Please give them a big hand. So they are uh, the uh, um, you know, main uh, proponents of the party. And as we establish the party, uh, and um, several years have passed. And now I believe that how to finance basic income uh, is not a question anymore. We have a complete answer. And now is the time that we need to explain uh, the um, rationale uh, for uh, basic income in a way that really touches the heart of the people. So I think we need to now develop uh, the words of convincing people uh, about uh, the common wealth we have and how it is justified uh, to share uh, share them with the people. So if you can uh, work with us in that direction, it would be great. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be brief. Today I've talked about uh, psychological security, uh, but I uh, wanted to uh, develop, develop a little more about mental health. So I'm not sure uh, which uh, discipline you're working on, uh, but uh, there is some experience where a basic income is being provided uh, to a small number of people in uh, a, a, a single uh, locality. Uh, you can uh, have, uh, you know, conduct the research on uh, the impact of basic income to their mental health. Uh, so uh, that's an idea uh, uh, for researchers. So uh, after uh, the uh, COVID pandemic, um, and, and actually from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, many people lost their jobs uh, out of the blue, and many of them uh, went to uh, personal delivery uh, services, uh, for example, uh, at uh, Coupon. And uh, these companies, uh, you know, at these companies, you have to work the uh, night shifts. So you experienced a, a temporary increase in income because you also get this uh, nighttime uh, payment. So what I want to see is if they had basic income, what kind of uh, choices these people would have had. And as they work night shift, they cannot really have a social life uh, during the day and uh, they end up uh, drinking more alcohol and, and um, hurting uh, their own health. Uh, so I, uh, my suggestion is to also uh, research on the health, the physical health of uh, workers. I'll be brief. When I gave you a talk, well, I talked about growth and redistribution and how growth is valued before redistribution. And I believe that the pace of this discussion differs in different places, different parts of Korea. So working as an activist for the Basic Income Party, 
looking at different issues from different areas, well, that doesn't always mean that we have the same issue or challenge in Daegu. Is it growth or anti-growth? We always have, ten, we tend to have this dichotomy. So for some policies, we look at these redistribution policies and when, when it comes to the stimulus checks, well, actually these checks helped us to revitalize the economy and many of the businesses came out of the crisis of becoming bankrupt. So that gave us a new point. When I tell everyone that I'm from Daegu, they say, gosh, but I think that Daegu is a blue ocean for a BI, so I'll do my best. Well, it seems like you have to include a lot of this in your thesis. So I hope you can address all of these lots of challenges. Well, I told you that I'm not going to rush you, but I am given this notice that I have to keep my time and it's time to close the session. So why don't we take one more question or comment before we close? Well, none, thank you. Or maybe just one. One hand over there. This is the last question. I'm a member of the party and the, and the supporter of the Congress. My name is Cho Guan. I have a question for uh, Jin so over there. You know, yesterday was the 300th day uh, since the uh, Itaewon Stampede uh, tragedy. So we have been uh, in the uh, protest uh, site. In, uh, I think uh, there is a connection uh, to basic income. Uh, how can basic income help preventing those tragedies? Thank you very much. Uh, you can ask this question personally to me. You spend the whole day with me as a porter, right? So, uh, you know, I uh, I wanted to uh, uh, say something about our research, uh, actually, but um, uh, often, whenever we have a kind of tragedy or accident, what the government uh, is doing is to declare uh, an area uh, as an emergency site uh, and uh, decide on giving out um, financial support uh, to the uh, affected. And as soon as that happens, the public opinion turns unfavorable uh, to the uh, victims and the affected uh, because they see it uh, as taking away uh, their uh, uh, taxpayer money. Now, we can think about uh, some similarities regarding the uh, victims of sexual violence or uh, stalking. You know, in the uh, Itaewon uh, Stampede, one of the uh, victims uh, had a uh, religion uh, that uh, dictates that the uh, dead body uh, has to be um, has to be transferred within three days. Uh, but the uh, family of the victim uh, didn't have the money, so there was a kind of uh, donation uh, campaign going on for them. So I think basic income can provide a kind of financial safety net for people like them. Well, uh, I'm, I have to be brief, I know. You know, uh, like I said earlier, there is a, a stigma uh, on the uh, victims or the uh, affected people uh, in a tragedy. Uh, in, uh, partly it's because of this uh, uh, extremely individualist uh, tendency of the society. Uh, and people uh, cannot uh, think about uh, any other uh, social order uh, than one person being over uh, um, another. So maybe uh, we can say uh, there's uh, too much uh, competition. In one of the reasons uh, for that social uh, atmosphere is the uh, assumption that you have to be uh, you have to establish yourself um, 
with your own uh, effort, uh, and you really have to uh, change uh, that assumption. And for that, we need to say that we uh, need uh, to establish a system where monopoly uh, is not allowed, and we need to share uh, the wealth, uh, which is common to everyone. Uh, that is uh, how I think that uh, basic income can uh, be connected to social tragedies like that. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah. So, we have uh, entertained the discussion of the avant-garde of the uh, basic income campaign. So, I think what we need to do is to just follow them. They uh, have uh, become uh, basic income advocates uh, from the deep experiences of their lives. And uh, listening to these people uh, and following them will be the best way to accelerate the introduction of basic income. So we have listened to six, uh, seven speakers. Kim han Seo Seo-taesung, Shin Ono, Shinji, Yangji, Yoon Kim jin Seo, and Hwang Bom Yang. Please give them a big hand. Now, with that, we wrap up the session on youth politics and basic income. Thank you.